This is the Black Pulse Pro, and they sure look good and feel good to touch, but that doesn't mean it's all good. But at least they do have wireless charging and good bass. Let's jump into the video and have a closer look. These earphones come with a number of different cases from different sellers, but the earphones themselves are usually the same. Mine also came with a silicone case for extra protection. There's no text on the box other than this sticker on the side. We have touch control, super bass, GPS positioning. We can change the name and it pops up as the real AirPods on iOS devices. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Here's the user manual with specifications. The earphones got 30 mAh batteries while the case got 250 mAh. One charge should give us about 3 hours of music, but I actually got more in my tests, but more about that later. Here they show how to pair them with your phone. In the middle are the touch controls. And the last page describes the front LED's functionality. Next we have the charging cable, and it's a typical Apple Lightning to USB Type-A. The rubber buds are soft and nice to touch, and they create a good seal in the ears. They're also comfortable to wear for longer periods. The case has a matte black color, and it's a soft type of paint, which makes it nice to touch and not slippery to hold. On the back is a nice looking metal hinge, which feels solid enough. And on the middle is a button for checking the battery. It's a very clean looking case, and there's no text printed on it. It's also very compact and will easily fit in any pocket. The lid feels nice and sturdy, and opening it will activate the charge light on the front and the pairing process for the earphones. The silicone sleeve that came with the package can be used if you want some extra protection. It does attract a lot of dust though, so it's not easy to keep it clean. It doesn't add a lot of thickness to the case, so it's a nice little extra. When it comes to the 250mAh battery in the case, it only gives us two full extra charges of the earphones. It's not very much, but I think it's okay for such a small case. It's also got wireless charging, but it will of course take longer to charge this way compared to using the cable. The earphones and the case are pretty much looking identical to the original AirPods Pro, except for the soft matte black paint, which I think is not an available option from Apple. I like how they look and feel in this color. They're quite compact and got a short stem pointing down from the sides. What I don't like is this part here. It looks like a microphone or sensor grill, but it's actually just a plastic sticker. I first thought it looked a bit strange, so I started picking on it, and it came off quite easily. So this is how it looks with the sticker on, and it's got a grill look in the middle and a shiny area around it. Here's without the sticker, and as you can see, there's really nothing under here. Putting it back on is also no easy task, so I'll just leave it off. And over time, it will probably fall off by itself anyway. The rest of the earphone both looks and feels good, but the plastic sticker leaves me with a mixed first impression. Under we have the charging connectors, and that's about it. When it comes to battery life, the manual says they should last about 3 hours, but in my test I actually got about 3.5 hours at loud volume, so I can't really complain about that, as they deliver more than promised. Like I mentioned earlier, the case gives us 2 extra charges, so we have a total of 10 to 11 hours, including the initial charge of the earphones. The pairing process is very easy, as all we need to do is open the lid to activate the earphones. Now select it on the phone, and we're done. The remaining battery of the earphones is now visible on the phone here. When reconnecting them, we can again just open the lid to activate it, and they will automatically connect to the phone. We can take them out of the case before they finish pairing, so it's really not necessary to wait. The touch controls work fine, as long as you touch the right area. Touch twice to play or pause. Touch three times on the right one to go to the next song. Touch three times on the left one to go back or to the previous song. Sadly, there's no volume control, but we can start the assistant by holding for three seconds. Looking closer, you can see the indented area on the stem here. This is the area that is touch sensitive. This is also the area where the index finger will naturally go when reaching for the earphones, so the placement is okay. My only problem is that this is also the area that I grab when I want to remove the earphones from my ear, so I have many times accidentally started the assistant or switched the earphones completely off. 
but after using them for a while, I learned how not to hold them, so I guess it's not a big problem. The earphones are ergonomically good and fits quite well in the ears. They sit comfortable for longer periods and the rubber buds create a good seal. I have a few times had to readjust the earphones to get a good seal, because they don't go very deep inside. When it comes to Codex, they have AAC, but there's no APTX or Aptex. Anyway, the sound quality is actually not bad, but it's a warmer sound. It's got lots of bass and goes quite deep, but at loud volume it gets a bit muddy. Mids are good enough, but lacking a bit in detail, and the same goes for the highs. The result is a warm and comfortable sound, that sometimes is experienced as a bit muffled, and lacking in clarity and detail. The volume goes high enough for me, but I am able to play at max volume without too much discomfort, so they may not be loud enough for those who need very high volume. One thing that may be a deal breaker for some is the microphone quality. It's just not very good. There's a sample I recorded, so you can hear for yourself. This is a microphone test for the Black Post Pro, so you can hear what it sounds like in a silent area. One, two, three, four. As you hear, it's not very clear and it's quite choppy. And this sample was made in a silent area. Another possible deal breaker is latency. There's just too much delay while watching videos and playing games. I tested in YouTube and Netflix for video and it's not very good. For games I tested in PUBG and it's also not good. Please remind that I'm doing these tests on a Samsung Note 10 Plus, which is an Android device. So hopefully all this works better on an iOS device. I've been using this daily for about a week now, and I have enjoyed the comfort and sound. So overall they're not bad, but it's not for audiophiles. And on Android, they're not good for video or games. And that's it for my review. If you liked the video, click that like button. And if you didn't already subscribe, just click that subscribe button and the bell below the video for more. Have a nice day, and see you in the next video. Bye bye.